Hey guys, Janine here. How are you all? I hope you're all doing well. In this week's episode, I'm going to show you how to create this tree stump woodland theme cake. Now, as you can see, there's a lot going on with just the cake on its own, let alone the topper. But what I've decided to do, which I haven't done before, is to break this up into two separate episodes. So in this episode, I'm gonna show you how to make the actual cake, which is the tree stumps. And in my next episode, I'm gonna show you how to make this gorgeous little pixie topper with a little butterfly lamp that actually lights up. I know you can't see it because it's really bright in here, but it does. Well, there's no time like the present. Let's get on with it. get started with this little cutie. Um, I've decided to make a very simple structure for this little cake simply because it is a two tier and it's offset. Now my tiers are tiny um, so I may have gotten away without using it but it's not something I want to risk. So I've made a really really simple structure. It's just an MDF board and I've got a wooden dowel through the center. I've drilled a hole through the center and then I've just put another board on the base and with that wooden dowel, I've hot glued it into the hole that I made in this board, made it food safe, and she's ready to go. So that's that. Now the other structure element to this cake is the actual cake boards that you put your cake on. Because they're offset and we have a center dowel, we sort of have to know where to drill them. So what I did was played around a little bit with the actual boards and sort of moved it around and decided where I wanted it centered. And I ended up around about here, and so I just drilled a hole straight through both of them together. So I knew that when I put them onto my board, they would match up. It is a little bit of a struggle still. It's gonna be a little bit of work working it out, but that's the general idea, okay? Right, let's get on with the cake. So for this cake, I have made just itty bitty tiny cakes, they're so cute. It's just a five inch round cake. This one is three inches high. The other cake, the top tier, is two to two and a half inches high. And I've just given them a basic ganache coat. And before we, we, before we pop this onto the structure, I'm going to decorate the top because it just makes a lot more sense. So let's do that. So to decorate the top of the cake, I've just got a little bit of ivory colored uh, fondant and I'm just gonna roll it out. Of course, we want enough to cover the top of the cake. A little bit of corn flour down so that I don't have sticking fondant, which is always annoying. And I want it rolled pretty thin. Okie doke. That should about do it, I think. This way, moving right on to the next. So to attach the fondant to the top, I'm just going to spritz with a little bit of water and paint that on with my paintbrush. Just like that. And the fondant goes straight on the top. Smooth that on. Now this uh, cake isn't actually attached to um, this board at the moment, so I'm hoping it doesn't do a dive on me. So I'll take the initial excess off, which we put aside because we'll need it for the next tier. Off you come. There we go. Lovely. That away so it doesn't dry out. And then I'm going to, once my knife's cleaned, go ahead and cut the rest off. Just keeping the knife flush with the cake. Straight up and down. And I'll cut the rest off. Okay, we've got a textured pattern on the outside. 
which saves us a little. Okay, so that is the top all done. Now I want to make it look a little bit, how do you say, loggy on the top. So I'm going to take my Dresden tool and just start marking the cake. So I want some deep marks on the outside, like so. And I'm looking for them to not be perfect. I want them to be a little bit jagged. Sort of starting them thinner in the center, thicker on the outside. I don't want them even either. Just like that. I think the less perfect, the um, more character it has. go I think that's a, a good start pretty good now let's get the handy dandy turntable because it'll help with this process and I'm going to just start making some circular marks around the stop just like that once again we're not looking at perfection, just keep it organic. Is that the word? Organic? And then after I've done the initial ones, I'm sort of just going to let my Dresden go a little bit so it's not so perfect. We don't want it perfect. Not what we're looking for. And that's about that, pretty much. I might just deepen the center a little more. There we go. How's that? That's working for me. The next thing I'm going to do is drop everything everywhere, clearly, is take just a little bit of ivory food coloring and I'm going to, for the first part, I'm going to leave it straight. So I'm not adding anything to it, it's just ivory food coloring. And I want it all in there, good and proper. Especially in the grooves. They're groovy, groovy, groovy. Just like that. Probably need a tad more. That's better. Nice and dark. Nice and dark in those grooves. Okay. Now, which of course I didn't get out because well, I'm not going to be that organized, am I? Me? No. A little bit of alcohol. And now I'm going to dip my brush in the alcohol. And I'm going to lay it flat and just start swirling it around. And it picks off a lot of that excess. I need a paper towel for this too to help wipe off more of the excess. A bit more alcohol. And I'm just going to keep going with this process until I'm happy with how it looks. Because for me, that's like really like way too dark right now. But it won't be. Oh no, not by the time we're done. A bit more of the alcohol there. And yes, like I said, just go ahead and keep doing that. Picking up the excess until you are happy. So using the brush tends to put some extra strokes in the top, which I find lovely also. Okay. 
Okay, I think I'm pretty happy with how that looks. I'm just going to let it sit for a minute just for that alcohol to um, evaporate a little bit and dry off and move on to the next bit. Okay, now we've got to get this cake onto our structure. Now, because I've let my ganache set overnight, I should be able to pick up my cake without too many issues. So I'm going to attach the cake to our structure with a little bit of ganache and then I can pick it up, looking for the base, put the cake under the structure. All right, we sort of have to be careful here because this is fresh fondant. So I'm going to put my finger right on top as that comes through. There we go. And push down. I'm just going to tidy that oh, section just a little bit. Beauty about it being uh, organic, really. Now this is where I need to test to make sure that my top tier is going to sit the right way on this board. So I'm just gonna really quickly do that. I've done the same on this and I'm knowing that that's gonna sit out that way. So do I want that more there or there? I think that looks pretty good actually. It's gonna be about there. So we're gonna very slightly, I don't know, it looks like we're gonna make it. So I'm gonna leave that cake there. I'm pretty happy with how that looks now. I've obviously left a little bit of hot glue on the bottom, which is why it's not attaching perfectly on the bottom. Um, but with the covering we're doing on the outside, it's really not gonna matter. So that's what we're gonna do next is cover the outside of this. Okay, let's cover the outside. So what I have here is just some light brown, teddy brown fondant. And making sure, of course, I've got enough that's going to wrap around the outside of the cake. And I'm just going to roll it into a log because I want it to be longish. Down with the old corn flour, the trusty non-stick protector, the Teflon of the cake world. And then, I'm just gonna start rolling this baby out. Need a bit of cornstarch on the top. We find that if, well, it's humid, of course. If it's humid or hot, your fondant might be a bit sticky. Um, in the case here, it's actually the middle of winter here, so it's neither of those things. But because I added color to this and it was only an hour or so ago, um, still hasn't sort of settled in properly, so it's still a little bit tacky. Let's check that. I'll get my tape measure, which I should have done prior, but you know me, ever organized, not. I have 16 inches around, so that's enough. And like I said, yep, three inches high, so definitely enough. And that's good. Although I am going to give it a bit more length just in case. Better safe than sorry. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is I've got this fancy handy dandy uh, impression mat, which makes things look like tree bark. But if you can't get your hands on one of these or you don't have time, you just want to have a fiddle, another great option is crunched up uh, aluminium foil or aluminium foil, depending on where in the world you're from. And impressing that over your fondant, amazing texture, and it really does look like tree bark. But I'm going to cheat and roll this guy pretty firmly. There we go. So firmly that some of it's broken, but that's okay. Can fix that up over the fondant. And the great thing about this texture is if it doesn't line up, it doesn't matter. I 
Last little bit here. And Bob is your auntie. All right, the fun part. I'm gonna squish it up a little bit because I do want it rusticy. I don't want it looking too perfect. That end looks a bit too perfect to me. There we go. And the other thing that I didn't get ready was a pizza wheel. Just going to make the base flat there. And we will be ready to wrap it on the cake. So I've got my cake here. I'm going to spritz again. I'll do it away from the fondant because I don't really want water on it. And then, semi-carefully, I'm just going to wrap that around. Well, that's, come un that's completely come unstuck, so I'm just going to remove them and add them in sections. No problems, only solutions. On you go. Beautiful. Lovely. I don't really want that sticking to the top because it's still a bit damp. So I'm very quickly going to take some of that excess off. As you can see, I'm not exactly being careful. You sort of don't have to be with this texture, which is what I love about it. Pretty rough. Some more around the back here. And you know what? I think I'm just going to leave where it overlaps because it's, um, I might cut this part off a little, but not a lot. Because it works because of the texture. It's great. Once again, that excess off the top. Now normally, of course, I would leave the top section to dry a lot longer than what I did, but um, that's okie doke. All right, I'm just going to go a little bit closer, but not all the way to the top of the cake. All right. Just taking that excess off there. Fold it under. Up you go. Thank you. You can see how rough that is, and it's just, it's really just not going to matter at all. All right, now I'm going to just lift it up a little and let it set up for a bit before I go ahead and do anything else to it. Making sure it's nice and firm against the side of the cake, but I want those bits sort of sticking up a little. Pretty much like that, okay? Oh, I like this bit bulging out. I really do. Okay, now with the pieces that we have cut off, I'm actually going to scrunch them up in, careful, oh, there I am, in a completely non-orderly fashion. So I've just, I'm just crinkling it up and squashing it onto the cake on the side and forming it into a tree root. Now if you want some more texture on it, well that's pretty simple. See? Same with the foil, if you've only got foil, use foil. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that a few times around the base. And that, guys, is pretty much how you decorate the bottom tier. And the other thing that I wanted to do is, like I said, once the top's set up a little bit, is just go around and pick some parts out really roughly. Uh, Cause I want it to look a bit broken. You certainly don't want a sharp edge around the top. 
because then we're not looking organic. It's going to be the word of the day, I think. Organic. Don't mind that. And that's pretty much that. So what we have to do now is attach the top tier. Okay, so this is where I said we'll run into some technical stuff, not issues, but I want to quickly double check where my cake will be sitting. So I can see the hole is there. So I'm going to need to dowel my cake about there and here. Because of course, even though it's little, it is ganached and then it's going to have fondant on top of that. So it will end up, oops, excuse me, pretty heavy. So we're gonna need some support. So I'm just gonna use some bubble tea straws. One through here. Now because of the size of it, I think that two will be sufficient. So, come on, oops. Lucky that's gonna be covered. Am I jutting up a little bit there, aren't we? I've done better jobs in my life. And one about there. So awkward when they're little too. Here we go. Do better, Janine, do better. She did better. Okay. And then just a little bit of ganache over here. And that will be enough to support our little guy here. And then I'm just going to pop him on. Now, yes, he's going to squish some of that work we've just done on the bottom, but that's okay. There we go. Top tier is on. Now I'm going to just go ahead and do the top exactly the same. I'll come back and show you a little bit of the sides because it's a little bit more tricky because we have a hang here, but um, there's no point in showing you the top because you've already seen how it's done and I'm doing this exactly the same way as I did the bottom tier. Okay, it's now time to cover the sides of the top tier. So, Got this baby here and I'm going to this time definitely cover this in two parts because we have this part at the back here that doesn't have any support. Um, it's a little bit more tricky to do it all in one piece. So I've got, I've done exactly the same as what I did for the bottom tier with the fondant. But I'm going to wrap this section first because it's got the support of the other cake. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do now. And all the way around. I don't want to see any of that board. And push some of that fondant underneath. Okay, so I've got that part done. It's all sticking to the top, but that's okay, remember? Organic, word of the day. Chop off this excess, just like we did with the first tier. Don't have to be precious about it. There we go. Oh, I love this texture, it's so forgiving. So forgiving. So I'm just going to add the next piece. With this piece here that sort of is coming down to the board, I'm just going to pull a little bit of the fondant and sort of very gently tuck it barely under that cake board. Just so it looks a bit more realistic. There we go. And then the very same with this piece, which doesn't have to be that big. But once again, taking it a little lower so that I can, whoops, I'm actually gonna cut some of that off. Far too big. Um, yes, taking it a little lower so that I can wrap it 
underneath that cake board. If you need to add a little bit of water underneath there, go for it. Okay, patch that there and there. This could do with a little trimsies. Trimsies, trimsies. Same on this side. This one could do with a bit of a bigger trimsies. But you're seeing like how rough I'm being because the effect is so forgiving. You really don't have to worry too much. And then it's basically just exactly the same as we did on the base. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so like I said, I'm just gonna let that top part set up again like we did with the bottom part and pull it off to make it a bit rough. And then we'll be ready to color the tree, which is what we're going to do after this short break. I'll see you soon. Okay, so we are back and it is time to color this baby. You know, while I was getting things ready, I thought I'd do a quick check of my footage and realize, I have no idea why, that uh, my overhead wasn't working for the last section. So you may not have seen me get the um, spiral sections on the top and for that, I really apologize. If you've got any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Okay, so there are a few ways that you can color this guy. Um, you can just hand paint it, uh, airbrush it, a combo of both, and that's what I'm going to do. So I'm starting with my airbrush and it's going to get a little bit loud. And I'm going to start with just some warm brown right here. Sorry, it's a loud airbrush. And I'm just sort of using my paper towel um, over the side here. So I don't get it all over the top tier. Uh, sorry, the top of the bottom tier. Get it right, girl. And I'm just gonna start airbrushing away. So I'm getting some darker patches, some lighter patches, and that's exactly what I want. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on the bottom tier. Now I'm going to go in with a bit of ivory and that will catch some of those lighter spots, just give it a bit more dimension.
Okay, so I'm pretty happy with how that's all covered. Uh, now the other thing that of course I've got to do is, if you see inside here, that's quite light still. So I'm gonna use a paintbrush and some of the brown airbrush color and just go ahead and hand paint that part. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. And the last bit of color I'm gonna add is actually a little bit of white. Um, it just sort of adds some highlight and does end up making it look a lot more real. So I'm going to use a white gel color, just on a paintbrush, and just go ahead and sort of dab around the tree, give it a little highlight. What you'll find is that because the airbrush color on top is still quite wet, it will pretty much just, the white will pretty much just blend in with it. You can see that. And um, all look very uniform. Try to make sure that you only go on the top ridges though, not the deeper ones, because of course the deeper ones, well that's where the actual shadow is. You don't want highlight on the shadowed sections. So I'm using the flat face here and that helps just get the top sections. I think I'm pretty happy with that. That is the coloring of the tree done. Yeah, that's looking pretty, pretty cute. Uh, the next thing I have to do is start making the decorations to go around this tree. So we will do that right after this break. Every house needs a strong foundation. I've teamed up with my former college tutor, Cecilia Young, to bring you over 25 years worth of knowledge and experience packed into this fantastic program. Within these eight individually assessed modules, we've covered the fundamental building blocks required to take your cake decorating skills to the next level. And that's not all, each programme is accredited by FDQ, a leading UK organisation for the food industry. We look forward to welcoming you on the Cakeflix Master Programme. Okay, we are back and it is time to make some embellishments, I guess you'd call them, for the tree. So what we're going to make is some fungi, uh, two types of fungi actually, normal mushroom and I don't even know what it's called, technical term, haven't got my books out, my encyclopedia, so I'm not 100% sure. We're going to make some lichen and we're going to make some fern-ish, fern-ish things. I'm doing it freehand, I don't have any molds, so I'm just gonna do the best I can. So let's get started with the mushroom, which is super, super simple. What I've got here is a really light tan um, gum paste. And for some reason, I don't know if it's this um, just this batch, but this gum paste has been like really sticky. That's not really behaving. So anyway, I'm just gonna show you one of each then they're sort of all the same. So to make the stem of the mushroom, I've just taken a piece 
and I'm rolling it into a long teardrop shape. You want to keep these quite small uh, because the tree trunks are small. We'll keep them relative to the size that you've made. That would make more sense. So I think that is still probably too big actually for mine. And that's basically it. Now because I'm going to be putting them on the side of this trunk, I'm just using, I believe it's a 22 gauge wire, and I'm just going to wire this guy for safety's sake. Just so I know it's going to stay. I'm gonna keep a little bit of wire exposed at the end, which I'll then food safe, and I'll be able to pop that in to the side of the cake. Just cut that off and that is pretty much pretty much what you want. Sort of chubbier at one end, skinnier at the other. To make the mushroom cap it's also super duper easy. Another piece of modeling paste, um, gum paste, rolled it into a ball and then using my finger I'm just rolling out one end, making sort of an indent up there. Okay, and then squashing that end. Just sort of pinching with my fingers to make sure that it's a little bit of a cap. Just like that. And that's basically the top of the mushroom. Now, if you want to get a little bit extra, you can take a craft knife and make some indents underneath. And then go around and make them even closer together. Can see it's far from perfect but I think you get my message my idea and there we go that's pretty much it small ball tool so make a little indent in the top there and pop that in my sticky gum paste there you go. That's your first little mushroom done. Okay, I'm gonna pop him aside and we'll color him up later on. The next thing is we may as well go straight onto the other fungi. You'll see what these are when I put them on. I, I really don't know what they're called, but they sort of hang out from the tree. So I've just taken a ball of modeling paste and I'm flattening around the edges, not the top so much, a little bit on the top, but you want sort of a slight dome. Just like that. Now these do not have to be in any way, shape or form a perfect shape. It's actually better if they're not. So I'm just pressing it down around those edges it out just like that and I'm sort of flattening one side because that's the side that'll go against the tree. Once again underneath I'm going to put some little ridges and make it a bit more fungi like. Here's my sound effects for the day. And that is how undifficult that part is. That goes aside. Move on to the next one. Now this one was a little bit of experimentation on my part. 
Now there are a billion, billion different types of lichen, but I found one that I went with and liked, and I'm not using any special rolling out methods here or anything. I'm actually going to, that's far too big. Just use my fingers. And you want it in a not so uniform shape, like I'm doing right here. Then I'm just gonna pop it on a petal mat using a really tiny ball tool. I'm sort of frilling those edges. Not in any sort of particular pattern or shape. And if it breaks, that doesn't matter either. And then thinner out. You see where I'm going with this? Just until you are happy with how your lichen looks. And it flared up a little bit on my edges. And then some of the little bits of lichen I saw had sort of like little extra dotty bits in the center. So I'm taking tiny, tiny pieces of the same color, um, come on, gum paste, rolling it into balls and just popping it on top like that. But these are like tiny, tiny pieces. Just like that. As many or as few as you wish. Organic, remember? And then with the small ball tool, probably best I put it in some corn flour because this is sticky. Just making an indent in the center of each of those. Not looking as lichen-y yet, but I'm sure that once we color it up, you'll get the idea. There we go. A bit more frilled. And then I'm just going to take it in my hand and pinch up those edges a little bit. Okay. And that's all I'm doing for my lichen. That can go aside. And the last one is my freehand fern. So this guy, I'm just taking a small piece of modeling paste that I have colored a darker green. I'm going to roll it out flat. There's a giant air bubble in there a bit more of this on just in case just like that and with my craft knife I'm just cutting a general sort of fern leaf shape just like this there we go this is very thin as you can see thin and delicate And as you can see, definitely no perfection here. And then, first things first, settle down, Janine. We want the center area. I'm just using my ball tool to mark the center, about there. And then I'm just going to cut some little ridges. Now, if you've got a um, fern mold, that's cool. Use it. <laughs> That's what it's there for. But alas, this little guy didn't. Okay, I'm doing that once again on my petal mat. Once again, putting some corn flour on because it is sticky. And with a small ball tool, I'm just going to give my leaves a little movement.
just like that. Nothing special. But once they're on and all coloured up, then they look pretty lovely. Okay, so that's that's about that. And that is pretty much it. Now we're going to go on to colouring these guys. Okie doke, now that all of those little bibs and bobs are made, we're just going to use some dust and give these guys a little bit of colour. So off we go. So of course for our ferns, I'm just going to use some darker green petal dust and just give it a little bit of a dust. Now of course, once again, I would usually wait until these guys were nice and dry before I did this. But time is of the essence. So off we go. Might add a little bit of, a little bit of brown. A little bit more brown. That was a little bit too much brown. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Organic. It's nature. There we go. So I'm pretty happy with that. So of course you go ahead and do all of the ferns the same way. The lichen. Now the lichen actually tends to have a little more um, brightness to it. So I've got a really bright lime green. And I'm going to use a little bit of that around some of the edges, especially on those little circular parts that we did. Like that, picking up those edges. And then I'm going to use the same green that I used for the fern. And go in with a bit of that. Now because we've started with a different base color, of course, the entire color is different. So that's another good point to remember. I do like that. However, I would like to try a little experiment that I haven't tried yet. So here we go. Just getting my paint palette out again. The one I've already used. And I'm going to stipple a very small amount of white gel colour on this. Oh, that makes me happy. Once again, that gel colour is blending in a bit with the green colour underneath. So it's keeping it a little more natural looking. Oh, I much prefer that. That's great. Needed more dimension. And that's what I've just given it. Much happier with that. Okay, so of course, then you go ahead and do all you like in the same. Moving on now to our little mushrooms. Got a few different colours here. This is a colour actually called mushroom. So I'm going to start underneath and dust outwards. So that's where the darkest part of the mushroom would be, where the shadow is, and then move my way up. Not going into that green, of course. Although if that happens, I suppose it's not really that big a deal, is it? This is uh, flesh colour, a little bit of flesh colour on there. Of course you can make your mushrooms pretty much any colour you wish. And I'm going to go with this like khaki colour. This is a custom mix. I've made that one myself with some greens and some um, ivory. And that will be great for the stem bit of that mushroom colour back underneath the dark colour. I'm pretty happy with that little guy. Uh, 
And last but not least, matter of fact, I'm not overly happy with that guy. I think I'd actually have left the stem the color it is. So I'll probably leave the stem for the next ones. And the next one, of course, is our other fungi. So I'm gonna start with the flesh color, but these guys come in so many amazing colors. It's quite incredible. So I'm actually going to add a pop of color to this one. And I'm gonna do that by adding a little bit of orange, starting slow and closer to the center. Like that. And then, once again, very lightly, a bit of brown, give it some dimension. More orange. Basically, it's a matter of just playing with it until you're happy with how it looks. I'm going to do some darkness on those edges. Just like that. So that will be my other fungi. Okay. So of course you want to go ahead and make sure that they're all colored so that we can get on to the next part, which is putting everything together so far. So we'll do that straight after this break. Right, let's put this baby together. So the first thing I wanna do is cover the board, of course, and the easiest way I find to cover the board when you're doing a cake like this is to cover it in colored coconut. So I'm covering my board firstly in some clear piping gel so that the coconut has something to stick to. Right, that's all on. Now I've just done the old desiccated coconut in a bag with some food coloring and, excuse me, itchy, and shook it all around. So it's pretty much the same color as my hair now. And then I'm just going to very gently sprinkle this over there. This is just always a messy job. There is no getting away from it. It's messy. But that's just part of the fun, right? It's exactly why I gloved up because there's quite a lot of food coloring in this coconut and I'll end up with really green hands. And as you can probably tell, I like green, but not on my skin. Thanks all the same. So basically, you just go around and in all those areas that are open, pop your coconut. Oh, 
Okay, that's done. I'm just gonna clean this up and we'll start the next bit. Okay, super duper quick tidy because I'm still gonna get messy. So the other thing that I want to do is to add some moss and I've got this cool trick for moss. Now, I didn't bake a separate cake just for this. What I did was made a 90 second mud cake, uh, not mud cake, mug cake. Uh, the recipes you can find on Pinterest everywhere, they are everywhere. So basically it's flour, butter, baking soda, vanilla essence, um, and a bit of milk. Yeah, that was pretty much it. In a mug, in the microwave, I made sure that I added some nice spruce green food coloring to it prior. And now I have this beautiful moss. So, turn this around here, grab a bit of our moss, give it a squish, a little bit of a squish, and I'm gonna pop it here, see I told you I'd still make mess, and just squash it up around the tree. Instant moss, and when that dries, I've got some lighter bits there where I haven't mixed the batter enough, but when that dries, It'll just stay stuck to the tree. So go ahead and add moss as much or as little as you like. Now as the dog joins the chorus again, I think I'm pretty happy with that. I've just, as you saw, used my paintbrush just to get rid of any pieces I didn't really want or squash them up against the cake. So, and I think that looks pretty effective. And now it's just to add all of our little embellishments that we made before. So I'm going to add my little fungi pieces first. Now to add these, I find the easiest way is put it where you want it. So I'm gonna say right here, lift it up and squash the base into the tree. Then let it hang down, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and add those where I want them. There we go. Now to add a lichen, very, very simple. I'm just going to, number one, squish it up some because that's what lichen looks like. Looks lichen. That's what lichen looks like it. And just attach that with piping gel. Just like so. There we go, our lichen is on. Now to put our mushrooms in, I'm thinking of putting a few in together. So I might just join a few up. Quite like that. I may put a third in. And, because it's on a, oh my goodness, seriously. Because this is on a wire, I really need to food safe it. So I'm just going to take a little bit of foil tape. You can use like a, um, I know there's these like great dipping materials you can use. But I'm just gonna put some foil tape on mine. Tape them together. While I try to ignore the crazy dogs. I cut a bit of my mushroom. Organic. Organic. And I'm going to just place it straight inside the cake. I can see a little bit of that um, tape. So, I'm just going to put a little bit of moss under there. And you will never know. Never ever know. Ta da! And then go ahead and add the mushrooms as you like. And of course, the last thing is our fern leaves. 
and you can just pop those on anywhere you like with a little bit of piping gel. So these are still quite um, what's the word I'm looking for? Well, they're not dry. So I'm just manipulating them as best I can. There you go. And then of course, just go ahead and embellish away to your heart's content. Well guys, excuse the giant mess and the gloved hands, but there we have it. This is part one of our Woodland Pixie Cake. Now, as you can see, it did loads and loads today, which is why I've decided to break this class up into two different episodes. So in next week's episode, I'll show you how to make the gorgeous topper that goes on top of this to really finish it off. I hope you really enjoyed today's demo and that you learned heaps and heaps and heaps. And don't forget to keep watching because there's more to come after this. Thank you again for joining me. I hope you are all well and I will see you next time. Bye bye.